Hello everybody! Hope you're doing great and are ready for some volcano updates. It's been wild here in Iceland, as some of you may know. A magnitude 5.2 earthquake struck a few kilometers southeast of Hekla, which caused a lot of excitement and a little bit of fear. Although this new series of earthquakes is not said to be related to Hekla, our scientists will still be keeping a close eye on the volcano for the next couple of days. Another big dog here in Iceland decided to show off and came close to beating Hekla show with three earthquakes over three in magnitude. Yup, that was Bárðarbunga. It's not been long since we saw a magnitude 4 earthquake from Bárðarbunga, making this a rather unusually short break between big earthquakes from the system. What could this mean? Overall, around 200 earthquakes have been detected since midnight on the southwest corner in Iceland. That's including the Hekla area, or Vatnafjöll. And to top it all off, a 3.2 magnitude earthquake struck between Mount Keilir and Faradarsfjall. There has been a lot going on in many different places. Let's take a closer look at these events in the data and detail section. So, as I said, a lot going on in different places. By looking at the earthquake map, the points of interest are conveniently marked with stars, or earthquakes over three in magnitude. And you can see three of them. Yesterday, an area just southeast of Hekla suddenly had the urge to scare farmers in the area. At first, of course, all eyes were on Hekla. But as the news and data unfolded, it came clear it was not directly linked to this iconic volcano. No, the causes are still up for debate, but most scientists agree that this is a typical Söðurlands skjálti, or a regular earthquake caused by plate movements in the area. These typical Söðurlands skjáltar, earthquakes, are larger earthquakes up to 7 in magnitude caused by sudden release in pressure built up by the plates rubbing against each other. We'll speculate more in the speculation and prediction section. On to the next point of interest. Bárðarbunga, Iceland's second most powerful system, couldn't let Hekla steal the spotlight. Three earthquakes over three in magnitude hit the area today, between 3 and 4 pm. This is rather unusual as this points towards an increase in activity in the area, since earthquakes of this magnitude tend to take longer breaks than the week it's been since the 4 magnitude earthquake in the area. But the activity is still slow. No follow-up earthquakes in the hundreds like in Vatnafjöll, south of Hekla. Whether the activity is about to increase there or not is uncertain. We'll just have to wait. Askja did have a magnitude 2.9 earthquake yesterday. It was overshadowed by the bigger performers. It's one of the largest in the ongoing activity there. It doesn't change the situation there in any way. Askja is just building up power to maybe produce a big eruption. If so, it's nothing we have to worry about. It takes time to build up that amount of power. The show isn't over yet. No. There was also an earthquake over 3 in magnitude on the Reykjanes Peninsula, 3.2 to be exact. As mentioned in my previous video, the earthquake activity has shifted to the south, away from Mount Keilir. That's where the earthquake struck. There hasn't been any activity in the Mount Keilir area in almost 3 days now. This doesn't really give us a better clue of what's going on there. The earthquakes just come from whatever depth they please, it seems, so it's hard to connect this to any imminent activity in the Geldingadale volcano, for example, which has been on the more alive side recently. It even seems as if it's about to come back to life with recent tremors and gas activity. Is that going to happen? 
and is an eruption from the Bardabunga system or Hekla on the corner? Well, uh, let's speculate a bit. There's definitely a lot that comes to mind following the recent activity. This recent activity in Vatnafjöll hasn't been seen in quite some time and came as a big surprise. As most of our experts agreed on, this activity is not caused by Hekla, but it may have effects on her and the other systems in the area, although Hekla is known for having little to no warnings prior to her things, and events like these will probably have little effects on her behavior. But there are other systems in the area. And I'm looking at you, Torvajökull. Torvajökull had been showing signs of magma intrusion recently with frequent low-frequency earthquakes under the caldera, but no signs of surface deformation. If this was magma, it would have been silica and liparite rich, which can make for an interesting eruption that scientists have yet to see here in Iceland. In historical time, that's to say. These recent earthquakes in the Torjökull area could also be the cause of the recent Vatnafjöll earthquakes, since they could have released pressure in the area, triggering the event. But that's just a speculation. I recommend checking out Just Icelandic's recent video. He goes into detail on Torjökull's connection with Bardabunga and how the recent events raise questions, since I can't fit that topic into this video. Instead, I'll be ending this on some speculation on Geldingadalir. The activity in the area between Mount Keilir and Fardasfjall shifted recently, suggesting some changes have happened down there. One of the possible causes that come to mind is that the magma is now retreating back south to Geldingadalir, after the ground in the Mount Keilir area turned out to be difficult to penetrate. This is of course very speculative, since we aren't even sure if this earthquake activity is caused by magma movement at all. What is more certain though, is that there is most likely still magma sitting pretty close to the surface under the Geldingadalir crater, and the increase in gas every now and then is due to the magma moving closer to the surface, but it never breaks through. What happened recently was that the tremors chart displayed what looked like agitation. It could have been due to weather, but it hasn't retreated just yet, so we were probably very close to the eruption actually starting again. And just now, as I'm making this video, the tremors activity is suspicious, so we'll definitely be keeping a close eye on Geldingadalir on the livestreams cam. On that note, you who made it all the way here are gonna have to wait and see what happens. Hope you enjoyed this video and were satisfied with the information and the sprinkle of speculation. Other than that, I want to thank you for tuning in, hope to see most of you in the next video, and thanks for watching.